You talked about Ibrahim Lamar. That it, it was when he was called back that the EFCC started showing some kind of sign of light. Let me yes. go over to you, Mr. Obani. Do, do you think this change um, is a kind of change Nigerians want, or this is just uh, cosmetic? Very cosmetic. Uh, my my position is this: What was the intention of the Federal uh, Republic of Nigeria for appointing uh, Madame Waziri as the EFCC man at the time they appointed her? Was he to fight corruption, to give a, a further uh, a bite to the anti-corruption crusade, or was it to protect some interest? Now, if it was to protect some interest, I think she has done very well for them. That is my position, because the, the idea wasn't to fight corruption whatsoever. And that is why most of us, at that point in time, fight, you know, fought against her, her appointment. And we, we saw what is happening today, that, that, will, that will not fight against corruption, there won't be any fight against corruption, because who are those that nominated her? It was Ibori, James Ibori that nominated her. The Benue state governor then, uh, is it Mr. Uh, uh, Mr. Akume, appointed, you know, and then even uh, Andwaka was responsible also for her appointment. So these were men that really brought her, not to fight corruption. So if anyone is crying now today that Wazri did not fight corruption, for God's sake, what was the intention from the beginning? It's important we examine the intention. It wasn't to fight what, corruption. What, what do you think would be the intention now? Now, the, the intention now, I am not clapping for the presidency for removing Wazir at this point in time. I'm not clapping for them. Except they give us a better reason. Why is Wazri removed at this point in time? Was it for the fact that she is inefficient? Is it for the fact that she's very corrupt? And I, I should say that that um, you know the Human Rights Watch report actually yes. said yeah. you, you know quoted a lot of people who yes. said she she was actually inefficient. Inefficient. So it, they didn't tell us that reason. So if they have not told us the reason why they suck at this point in time, because to me it's belated. Because that was the time we were clamoring for her removal. Now, if you now see that even Lamode himself has come in and then there is some small fight against corruption because I'm seeing some revival, it's especially when the CGN made a pronouncement recently that all the corrupt cases must be finished within six months. And then she was very happy about it. She recently has been clamoring for a, an arm of government, judicial arm, that should be specifically targeted for trying corruption cases. So there has been a revival yeah, in it. And, and he didn't, didn't, he didn't yes, in fact, she, she was actually pushing for pushing and even placed those governors. For feature. Yes, place those know, governors on watch lists. You know? So if she has not been fighting, before and we clamor out for her removal, you as a president never remove at that point in time. Now that there has been a rev in the fight and you are removing her without giving us reason, I'm not clapping for them. This, I'm is, not. this is complete interference. Uh, the, the kind of interference that uh, the Human Rights Watch report, again, I keep referring to that report now because it's very important, very detailed, 64 page. You know, that report actually said one of the biggest problems with uh, Nigeria's fight against corruption <laughs> is political interference, especially from the very top, from the level of the presidency. And do not also forget that you know, at some point in time, she made this gaffe in public, I mean, Mrs. Farida Waziri, where she said that she had to take a report that she concluded an investigation on an issue, and then she took the report to, to the, presidency. Uh, the, the, the presidency. presidency to find out whether to go ahead with prosecution or not. I, I think that, so that, this, that, that, that was, that was, was unlawful. The EFCCR did not saddle her with that responsibility to go and uh, obtain permission from the president before prosecuting. Well, but some people will tell you, well, that's the act reading down, but in practice, it doesn't work out that way. <laughs> you, you need to practice but what don't, the don't law Don't you think is. this is interference now by well, the president? I, I, I must uh, tell you, it is not only doing her. You know, the anti-corruption is not, it's not, it's not, a, it's not a, a joke. Uh, it is a very serious governmental business, and uh, because of the of the of the of the deep seated corruption within the society, you need that crusade to be spearheaded by the president and commander in chief of the armed forces of Nigeria, because they are the, even the forces are also part of the EFCC, and they are under the command of the president. You see, the executive arm, arm, arm I mean, it is a fact. It is the most corrupt arm of government, the executive. And they are also the one to prosecute. They are, it is also the arm that we investigate, that we prosecute. All the anti-corruption agents are also under the executive. And the judiciary can only wait for them to complete their, their investigation and bring over the, whatever the case they have to the courts before the judiciary can, can, can spring to action. Legislature can only, can only make law. They have made their law. So a law depends on the executive. And the head of the executive is very, very, very central. So that if he is not committed to the anti-corruption struggle, then forget it. There's no point wasting time. What, what kind of changes should we be seeing in the Well, fight, I expect, I expect no, by not now... Not just a change in leadership. No, 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 no. The, the leadership is... Uh, no, no. If the leader, and in any case, the man who yes. has just been appointed, the acting chairman, yeah, yeah. has always been... He, has, he was there right from inception. He has passed through a lot of trainings. And I've had calls to also work with him. 
you know, and I know the depth of his knowledge when it comes to it. You know, he is not he is not a political appointee. Even though so some, some people will tell you, well, yes. they, they do. Some people would say, some people argue that you know it's difficult to see how this change. Well, it is true. I agree. This man is not a political appointee. He is a, he's a career officer within the EFCC, so he will be there even many more chairmen to come. He will still be there. I think it's better for Nigeria because a lot has been invested in him. So it's not a question of changing the leadership, the leadership because it is the system itself. How empowered is the system? How independent is that organization? The law depends on the executive. By now, I expect that they will be thinking shopping for a good replacement. I expect that by now, there will be an invitation to the uh, global invitation. Any Nigerian who believes he can deliver on the functions of EFCC as contained in EFCC Act, please apply. Then appoint about three mem member panel to screen all applicants and zero down to three. Then propose those three to the president and appoint one of them and propose to the Senate and, for and, confirmation. And, and not just make it open, make it transparent so that the whole world will know that you are serious.